Today, I'm gonna show you how we brought this magical D&D item to reality. This is gonna be epic. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. I love projects like this. So, all right, check it out. This right here is the Robe of Useful Objects. It's a D&D magic item, and basically all those little patches on it, like you can rip it off, and it becomes the thing it's a patch of. So like if you need a ladder, you rip it off and a ladder magically appears or whatever. And I got to thinking, how would I make this work? How do I make it work in real life? So that's what we're gonna do here today. We are gonna make our own robe of useful objects. First things first though, the theming, because I didn't want it just to be like random objects like it can be in the game. I want it to be very specific for the use case that it's gonna be used in. Basically, my workshop here. I like to think of myself and honestly, all of you as like artificers, like materials wizards. We come up with a thing that doesn't exist in our heads, and then we conjure and make it real. And any good wizard needs some badass wizard robes, am I right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fill this thing full of stuff that's useful here in the shop. The stuff that I commonly like misplace or need in a pinch and can kind of like grab in an emergency basis. And let me tell you what, I might have overdone it. We went to town with this thing. We, did, we weren't playing any games. Though, if we were playing games, we'd be doing so with today's sponsor, Misplay. Did you see that? You see that transition? Woo, so slick. If you don't know what it is, Misplay is a loyalty app for those who love playing games. Basically, the way it works is you find some new mobile games that you're interested in, and then earn points just by doing the thing you do anyways, playing them. Those points you then can redeem for real gift cards. Which can I just say is like a genius idea. Like if you're gonna be sitting there playing anyways, like I like to do to unwind, why not also earn some extra points towards these gift cards? Now you're taking something that would have been just kind of relaxation time and making it work for you. Grinding even when I'm playing games, so. And they're gift cards for places that you want, like Amazon, Walmart, straight up Visa cards. Misplay has a huge catalog of games, including action games, puzzle games, casual games, you name it, they got it. So you are bound to find something that you're gonna love. If you're interested, just visit misplay.com backslash skill tree, or click the link in the description below to get Misplay for free. Get 200 bonus points for signing up today, plus use my code inside the app to get an additional 30 free points. Points that you can use towards redeeming your very first gift card. Check out the description below for more details and happy gaming. All right, but this is a long one. So let's just jump right into it and level up this skill. Okay, so starting at the beginning, I had to make the actual template for this thing. To make that, I used the cheapest material I had, which is some of this painter's drop cloth that I got from Home Depot. My mad plan here was to go ahead and make this into panels. So it'd be like one, two panels, and then three would be the whole back panel. So to make this happen, I started by draping the fabric over my mannequin. So it was covering roughly half of the front, then tightly pinned it to my mannequin into place, making sure it was nice and form fitting, particularly around like the center line of my body here on the side, as that's where the panels are gonna come together. All the excess material, I just kind of bunched up and pinned to the back to keep out of my way. This gives me pretty much how I want the thing to drape on my mannequin. Next, I went in with a pencil and just kind of marked where the armholes would go, the seam at the shoulders, the space for the neck, and I made extra sure that there was space underneath the armpit. It's super tempting to make it like right up against there, but actually like if you don't have enough space, whenever you raise your arm or whatever, it gets it gets too tight. I have that problem with like suit coats all the time. I can only lift up to here. Nothing, nothing high for me when I'm dressed up. <laughs> Finally, I draw a straight line going down the side all the way to the bottom. Then I unpin the whole thing and bring it back to my workbench so that I can clean up those lines, making sure they're nice and straight. Once happy with that, I cut it out and then pinned it back into place on the mannequin just to make sure it all lays out correctly. I think that's a good first start right there. It kind of looks Final Fantasy-esque how they have like one side long and then no on the other side. I don't know, I just think it looks Final Fantasy to me. Okay, so to continue the making process of this, I now start draping across the back the same way I did the front. Now my plan here is to only make half of that back because I can make that a little bit more perfect and then just double it when I go to cut it out. I just make sure to pin it to the front panel so that the seams will line up and pin the rest of it into place so it looks like how I want the finished thing to look. Then just as before, I go back in and draw all my lines where those cuts will need to be, as well as marking out the center point, not only across the shoulders, but across my big old booty. I want it to kind of like taper and flare out at the back a little bit. If it all just kind of comes down straight, I think it'll be tight around my hips. With that good to go, I just unpin it, bring it back to the table, and really define that center line so I know where to cut. 
And as you can see, once it's put on, it goes exactly down half of my body while still connecting to that front panel. Let me just say, I'm already really jazzed at how this looks. It's kind of cool. While here, I also pinned up the material at the bottom just so I got an idea of how high I wanted it to land. Okay, so that is like the body, right? We're gonna double up those things to make the rest of it. But next, I wanted to bang out like what the sleeves would be like. They need to have kind of billowy sleeves because I have plans for this. Oh my god, I'm so excited to show you. We did not play games with this thing. To get the measurements for how that would land, I just used my fabric tape here and wrapped it around that opening to pull my number and then added a couple of inches to that number to account for some like extra seam allowance. Then I basically just grabbed the scrap O fabric and pinned it up into this kind of tube shape here. Because a sleeve is basically just a tube for your arm, right? That said, when you kind of put it on, it's just like a straight tube which I don't want it. I would like it to kind of conform with my arm a little bit, get a little smaller towards the end there. So with that in mind, I just pinned up down by the cuff exactly how small I think that should be. Then using my ruler to make a line from the opening all the way to that pinned area, I was able to mark out an easy gradient that I pinned up. And putting that in place, I could feel that I really like that spacing. It's still billowy enough for the plans I have, but it's not so friggin' crazy that it's all over the place, right? If anything, more loose fabric is more dangerous in the workshop. You want it to be as tight as you can make it. So with that all planned out, I just went ahead and pinned up my sleeve to the rest of the template. One last easy thing to lay out is I thought it would be cool to have like a hood that attaches onto this thing. The D&D &D item has one, but I think I'll make it detachable just so that I don't always have to be lugging around a hood with me. And this is super simple to make. I actually just grabbed like a cut off section of fabric, folded it in half, and then cut out kind of a lazy arc. Basically what I want like this part to be right here. Once that lazy arc is pinned up, you can see kind of the body of a hood. They're not all that hard to make. And this just like everything else, I pinned into place to see how it all lay out. And I don't know, that, that's looking like one half of a robe to me. I get really excited about this. Now with the template down, we can move into actually cutting out our material. The first material I'm using here is this black denim that I got from Joanne Fabrics. So a quick note on the materials for this project, because I am using it in the shop and in the shop, I'm exposed to like fire and stuff. I wanted to get something that is like the least reactive as possible, or at least if it burns, it'll burn and not melt onto my skin. As such, everything I'm using here is 100% either cotton or linen. So that black material, 100% cotton. And thick and rough, like you'd expect to have at a workshop. This I just ironed out so it was nice and flat, and then laid my back panel into place, pinning it down. With that where it needs to be, I trace around the image using some tailor's chalk, giving myself about a half of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Once that was in, I unpinned it, and then flipped that whole thing over, lining it back up with my line, and then doing the whole thing again. By mirroring it this way, we can make sure that it's exactly symmetrical. And once that's all traced out, it was down to just cutting the piece out. As I went, I just continued to pin this all up so I knew it would all fit correctly. I then moved on and did the exact same thing with the two front panels too. Now that black fabric is gonna constitute the inner lining. At first I was gonna have it on the outside, but then I realized it just, it attracts every speck of dust you walk by like a friggin' magnet. So instead, I was actually able to get some of this linen material that not only looks snazzy, but it cleans off really easily. You just kind of brush stuff away, it's great. Now, depending where you're at, 100% cotton might be a little bit less expensive. I actually was able to get a good holiday deal on this. It was like 25% off, so I'm like, why not? This just as before, I laid out on my table, but this time I actually used the lining as my template so that I can make sure they're exactly the same. And once all those were cut out and ironed up, I was able to pin it all together and look at how cool this looks. Like even just here, just pinned up, I'm so excited about it. It looks kind of mad scientist-y, which I am not mad about. I kind of love, to be honest with you. It definitely toes that line between like, you know, magician, magic artificer, and straight up diabolical scientist. Which I think, I think that explains me pretty well. That's not too bad. But I would be remiss to make a robe of any sort and not have just pockets. I need pockets. These are super simple. I just kind of cut generic pocket shape out of paper and then made those out of both the lining and the outer material. I made it in two sizes, a smaller size and a larger size, with the smaller size being an inside pocket and the larger size being kind of my hip pockets. Okay, so with all the pieces cut out, we're almost ready for assembly, but uh, there's a specific vibe we're going for, right? It's supposed to be the cloak of useful objects or the, the robe of useful objects. I need those patches that like have a bunch of cool crap in them. There needs to be stuff hidden around. 
And again, the theme is stuff we've used here in the workshop. So I, I got a collection of things. A huge variety of objects that I honestly need all the time, but always lose. Something to write with, a little multi-tool, personal protective equipment, maybe a flashlight, definitely a measuring tape. And I'd love to fit something like a pocket reference guide into it. If you've never seen the pocket reference guide, it has literally everything you could possibly need to know. It's so cool. It's like the best book there's ever been. And I especially decided just the tiniest little first aid kit. You know, some tweezers, band-aids, a little alcohol swab. Again, most of the stuff that's in here is supposed to be either like general use or, or things I lose a lot or emergency type items. In the game, all the patches you rip off, you only get one use out of them and they're done. This one you can get multiple uses, obviously, but I want it to be more like in a pinch when I can't find it. Okay, so I figured I'd start with the hardest tasks first, namely these gloves. I want work gloves to kind of come from inside of the sleeves and actually just kind of fit right onto the hand, but then when I'm done with them, I take them off and they retract back up into the sleeve. It was like a fever dream I had and I really wanted it. I figured the best way to make this happen is to use some of this elastic banding here. Basically, I'll attach it to the glove and then loop that banding like around my back and attach to the other glove. So it's like always under stretch whenever it's being used and will want to retract back in. So to make this work, I first put the sleeve on and decided about where I wanted that glove to land so it was very much out of the way. Then I made a mark just above where that would be. With that mark in place, I stuck a needle through it so that I can see on the other side through the lining exactly where that spot should be and mark it with some tailor's chalk. I then used a razor knife and cut about a half of an inch of a line through just that inner lining. The thought is that that elastic banding is actually gonna go underneath the lining over the back so it's not like in the way. And it's a natural stopping point for the glove. So the glove will go as far as it can go and that's where it'll rest. Now, because they are just kind of a, an open slit, I didn't want it to rip over time or like fray up really badly. So I actually ended up just using some of this bias tape here. This is basically like a ribbon folded in half. I just cut two strips the length of my holes here and then sewed them into place on either side of that slit. This will help guide that elastic, but also stop anything from fraying. Now, as you can see with my little test here, it actually, it looks like it's gonna work really well. Though I didn't want the glove just kind of flopping around in there, right? Well, not in use, like wrapping around my arm. So I figured once it got in there, there should be something that like holds onto it, that hooks it into place. For just like the simplest thing I could come up with, I grabbed some of this heavy duty Velcro and stuck it onto the back of the glove. Then I removed the tape on the other side and stuck it to where it would land inside the sleeve. This is the iron-on kind, so all I had to do was heat it up well to give it a really secure bond. I, of course, did this on both sides, getting us all nice and set up. Now, while we're working on the sleeves, the next thing I wanted to have kind of in them was that, like, retractable pencil and also a tape measure. I grabbed this little retractable pencil holder from Home Depot, which will work exactly how I need it to. And this little fabric tape is small enough to stay out of the way, but it'll totally fit the bill. I even added this little piece of leather here so it was easier to grab from inside my sleeve. Now, the only caveat with that little tape measure is I have to be able to push the button to make it retractable. So when I added Velcro to that, I made sure there was a little tiny cutout in it so that I could access that button through my sleeve. I also removed the little clip from this pencil holder and added Velcro to the bottom of that too. Then both of these, I just stuck to the inside of my sleeves exactly where I thought they should go. Kind of mid forearm E. Now, just to make doubly sure everything stays secure, I did end up sewing that Velcro into place. And look at it! Look at how cool this works! You pull it out of the sleeve, retract it right back, and the pencil looks like a freaking magic trick. It just disappears. Listen, y'all, I know this is super extra and totally not needed. I don't care. It is so much fun to make. <laughs> and you think that's extra? Wait for what comes next. First though, with the sleeves all done, I just went ahead and added the outer shell to it, making sure to sew it all together inside out. And I also only sewed like the, the seam at the bottom and then where the cuffs kind of come around. Now with that all together, I can reach up through the armhole and actually pull the whole thing inside out or right side out in this case, giving me these awesome looking sleeves, honestly. And look at all my little tricks. The tape works, though hard to test by itself. The little glove thing totally works, which I am just relentlessly proud of. It's so dumb, but God, I love it so much. Now for the next just absurdity. This next one's just even more absurd. I promise you this. 
So I had a vision that, all right, if I'm gonna have a hood, I wanna make this hood useful for something. And I figured it would be cool to house all of my like PPE, my personal protective equipment, right in that hood. You know, the stuff that goes on your face at least. Basically, I wanted a dust mask, I want safety glasses, and I want, I want earplugs. All of which have to be easy to dispense, but then tuck away out of the way where I don't have to think about them. So first things first, I drape the hood over my head and just kind of push in right where my ears will land. Knowing this is gonna let me know kind of where I can place those earplugs so they're kind of out of the way, but still like easily accessible to my ears. These spots I just marked with my tailor's chalk and then moved about an inch up and back from that point and made a little half inch incision just like we did before. After doing that on both sides, I actually just took it to my sewing machine and sewed all around that cut to stop it from fraying. Totally easier than having to add bias tape to everything. I don't think I really have to. With that all secured up, I then cut these tiny little squares out. These bad boys are about two and a half inch by two and a half inch, and basically they're gonna form little tiny pockets that go over those holes. So there's a place for like the earplugs to fit into and just be out of the way. To get these going, I just folded up all the corners of those squares and then ironed them down. This will give me nice clean edges to this little pocket. That top fold, I sewed down into place just so it wouldn't flap open later on. Next, I stuck my little earplugs out through those holes so I can assess right where they'd land and then put the pocket material right over them, pinning them into place so I didn't lose where they had to go. Then again, off into the sewing machine to secure that into place. And look at it, it's a little tiny pocket. And you reach in that little tiny pocket and bam, Little earplugs. And those earplugs are connected by like that little blue wire. So that goes underneath the lining. So it can never fall out or leave you. They just put them back. Just a reminder though, we're only doing this all to the inner lining, right? We don't want to be putting holes through that outer lining at all. Cool, so next I figured I tackled the dust mask and this one ended up being really easy. All I did was attach a button right kind of behind my head, behind my, my mouth area where I'd want the pressure to be coming back from. Doing this just kind of allowed me to put this dust mask's like ear things right around that button and cinch them into place. Then I made another large pocket just for the dust mask to sit into. Now I can like neatly tuck away back there and not be in the way, but if I need it, I just pull it forward and it secures back to my face. All right, so earplugs, dust mask. Last one, and this was kind of the hardest one for me to wrap my head around, <laughs> a little wrap around my head, I guess, um, is my safety glasses. First things first, I need to remove the little glasses arms or legs or what do you call them? Little, these little hooky things, I don't know what they're called. Anyways, I had to get rid of them. Luckily, they just kind of unscrewed. They were super easy to get rid of. Then using my Dremel, I actually just drilled little holes right into the corner of those glasses. This allows me to attach that elastic banding to it again. Now I can make sure I can secure it to my head and it'll stay put, but it's not as in the way or cumbersome. That's all well and good, but I couldn't put like another pocket back there. I think it would take up too much space and I want really easy access to these things. So I figured the best way to do that is to actually like make a magnet of some sort. In order to mount that, I used my Dremel again and made a little hollow out right at the bridge of the glasses. Just enough room to fit this tiny neodymium magnet. These things are super strong and I'm gonna use two of them for this project. To secure it, I just dabbed some hot glue in there and then pushed it into place. Now I figured I wanted there to be some flexibility with how much space like behind the hood and my head there would be so I can move it around. So I just cut and sewed on this tiny little flap of leather here. This also makes it so if I need to replace those glasses, it's pretty easy. I just remove the elastic and then thread it back through with new glasses attached. I then stuck a second magnet to right where that would land inside of the hood. This is gonna go underneath that piece of leather there. This way, once it's sewn into place, it's not gonna go anywhere. And it gives me a really strong connection point for my glasses to stick to. So with all my knickknacks onto the lining, it's time to put the lining and the outer shell together. And with hoods, this is actually kind of tricky. First and foremost, we gotta sew up, you know, where that seam is gonna be. Just make sure you're sewing it on the side that you're not going to see. Okay, so to connect these two together, you first wanna start by like having the hoods kiss each other, right? So the face holes are facing each other. And again, with the sides that you're not gonna see are gonna be facing out. Now I fold up one of the edges of the outer shell and I line up the inside edge of the inner lining with that corner. Following that, I just pin all the way around where the face hole is, again, with it kind of kissing together like that. Once that's all pinned up, it's off to the sewing machine to actually lock them into place that way. Just again, make sure you don't sew up like the neck hole area, right? Just where the face would be. Doing this allows me to reach into that neck hole between the two pieces of lining and pull them right side out. And just like that, you got a hood. You got a hood with a lining on it. 
Doing this just makes sure all those seams are hidden and everything looks nice and clean. It gets even more nice and clean when you iron your seams down, making them tight and flat. Now to test this sucker out, I just went ahead and pinned it to my shirt so it would stay put. So what's this? I'm doing a project where I need a dust mask? Bam! Dust mask. But oh no, my eyes aren't safe. No worries. Bam! Safety glasses. And of course, we must protect the ears. Shazam! Earplugs! I know what you're thinking, all that stuff back there, like you must feel weird or whatever. I actually don't feel it. There's enough room in the hood where nothing's touching you. And even if you pull it tight, like the shape of the safety glasses is made to go around your head, right? It actually just fits perfectly around there. I don't feel anything when I have it on. It all comes out pretty cleanly and it all tucks away really easily. The magnet catches easily. It actually works really good. Um, wow, it's so good. <laughs> I love this. Okay, with all that madness done, it's time to actually start putting the rest of the robe together. This is fairly straightforward. I just went ahead and pinned up all of the seams together, starting with the inner lining, which after sewing it, like, look at it. Looks like a little jacket. Fit nicely, there was enough room underneath my sleeve, so it felt like, like, you know, I can move around in the thing, which is what I need to do. And then the same thing with the outer lining. Once that's all sewed together, it just looks like a little robe. It's perfect. Now to combine them together, I actually put them on the mannequin because I want them to drape correctly, and I used gravity to make sure everything lined up correctly. And I just pin them all around the outside edges. You don't wanna, you don't wanna sew the sleeve holes together. You have to be able to turn this thing back inside out after the fact. And if you have the sleeves all sewn up together, it just doesn't work. Don't ask me how I know. It's at this point that the project, the project almost made me cry. It was real bad. Basically though, after I pinned it up, I put it inside out and then I sewed up those seams, leaving the very bottom open. This way, when I pull it right side out, Check that out! It is like a sleeveless robe right now. It's like if a yoked wizard went to the wizard gym. Alright, from here we want to install the sleeves, right? And this is the point where like, yeah, I had to cut out a lot of it because it would have been just extra seeing my mess ups. Don't do it in this order. I shouldn't have added the lining to the sleeves yet or put the sleeves completely together. I should have done it like in steps so that I could hide all those seams. Because I didn't, you're actually gonna see the seams on the inside. I'm not too worried about it. it's on the inside, but still, I could have done a better job. But remember, we have that like elastic lining that connects the gloves. So the first thing we have to do is pass that elastic between the inner lining and the outer shell there all across the back and then exit out the other sleeve. Then to actually connect the sleeve into it, I just kind of curled up the fabric where it connects, then slid it into the sleeve hole and pinned it all together. This way when I sew it up, yes, you see that kind of on the inside, but on the outside, that whole seam is hidden and everything looks super clean. Just make sure you don't sew through your little elastic here because you want it to be able to freely pull back and forth. That good to go, I just connected the other sleeve and then ironed out all of my seams. All right, home stretch. We're gonna add some flair to this thing and then we're gonna add our patches. Now just for an extra look and some extra strength for where it will like button up, I wanted to add a, like a strip of leather here. The easiest way for me to make a template with that is actually just to go in there with some blue painter's tape and lay it down exactly how I kind of wanted that to be. Then I simply peeled off the tape and that's my template. For leather, I'm using this suede that I bought from Tandy Leather. I simply stick my template onto it and then cut it out nice and easy. On the back side of that leather, I added some of this Tanner's Bond tape so that I can stick it into place right where it needs to go while everything's on my mannequin. Then I was just off to the sewing machine to lock it in place. I like that so much that I actually decided to add more to the shoulder area doing exactly the same thing. This not only has a really cool look all the way around, but it also like takes a lot of the weight off of that shoulder seam there. Because one, it's a good amount of fabric and then I have other stuff that's gonna be in it. I want that to like last long. Now for my buttons, I wasn't exactly sure how to do buttonholes like with the leather like that. So what I came up with was actually just to draw this kind of square around where the slit would be and then use my machine to sew all around it. This will just help stop anything from fraying or ripping the fabric. Then I simply use my razor knife to cut all the way through the leather and the fabric. On the back side, I also added some super glue to the fabric just to make sure it didn't fray at all. Then on the other side of the robe where those holes land, I simply sewed on some cool looking buttons. And then check that out. Oh my God, it looks so damn cool. I figured now would be a good time also to like attach on the hood. And I decided to go real simple with this. First though, I had to sew up the bottom of the hood, which was still open. Then I simply punched some holes right into the corners of the hood and dropped in some snaps. Then I did the same thing kind of on the shoulder area, right where those snaps would land. 
dropping in the other half of those snaps. This gives me a really easy connection point to put my hood onto and take it off if I need to. Okay, so it took me a little bit to figure out this next part and how I would put these patches on so that when you rip them off, the thing that they represent is there for you. Originally, I was gonna like make pockets between the linings and stuff and it was, it was going to go a little crazy. But I decided I'm actually using pockets. I already have these kind of built-in areas. So I might as well utilize those. First and foremost, these are the patches. I had them kind of laser engraved, but each one represents something specific. For example, like for this little light here, I made this patch that kind of represents a light, at least to me, and this is mine, so, you know, good enough. So my thought is that it would sit on top of the pocket here, and whatever's connected to it will actually rest between the space, between the lining of the pocket and that outer area of the pocket. I also wanted them to be patches. I want them to stay in place. I, I want them to not only hold the thing that, that they're holding in place, but also not flap around themselves. So to reuse a trick we've used already, I just slap some Velcro to the back of these and then position them right where they would go on top of the pocket. Once that's all secured, I folded up the edges of the pocket and ironed them down. With the top edge, I actually sewed just a little bit on the sides, leaving me with a nice opening that I can slide stuff into. Then I simply attached all of my pockets where they'd go to the row. Now, because my rope was open, those inside pockets, I was able to kind of turn it inside out a little bit and sew it so that the, the seam didn't go through. In retrospect, this also would have been easier to do before I put the two pieces together. So yeah, before you attach your lining, attach all your pockets so you don't have to fiddle with it. We're, we're learning. This is all a work in progress, leveling up and all that. The outer ones, though, I didn't mind just going straight through everything and making sure they're nice and strong. Now, to actually, like, connect the patch to the pocket and have the thing inside, I decided the easiest way to do this is actually to attach this little tiny strip of leather right to the back top of the patch. So showing how it works with this multi-tool one here, I simply rip it away from the Velcro, and bam, my little tool comes out with it. And look at it, represents the thing that it is. Then when I'm done with it, I simply slide it back into the pocket where it goes and the Velcro keeps everything into place. While also giving me full use of that pocket, not taking up any extra room. One of those patches I thought would be cool if it was actually magnetic so it could like hold stuff. So to facilitate that, I just added some Tanner's Bond tape to the back of a really strong magnet and then stuck that right to the back of the patch that I had made for magnets. Now I have an easy spot to hold whatever metal tool I'm using. I decided it would be cool actually too. I added a magnet to the back of that little headlamp light. So now I can just stick that right to my chest and I have light right where I need it. Now this next one I'm really proud of. I got creative with that, that little reference book. I thought it was a little too chunky. It would, I don't want all these pockets to be like bursting. I want them to be small and, and the whole thing to still be lightweight. And as much as I love that reference guide, it's just, it's way too big. So to get around that, I actually got one of these RFID tags that you can program to do pretty much anything. That I stuck onto the back of this patch here. Then I simply sewed the magnetic patch and this patch into place. And the cool thing about that programmable patch is it's programmable. Like any information I want, I can make a chart, like a whole list of all the things that I commonly use. And that'll just give it to me right away. I can make it so it gives me calculations right away. Whatever I want it to do. I can make it so it automatically starts my playlist if I wanted it to. Really cool. The only other feature I really had to figure out, and this was a special request from, from Maddie, was a way, to, a way to stop myself from being on fire. It turns out with this particular job, you find yourself on fire more often than the average person. At least I do. I thought the easiest way to do this would be with some kind of a dry fire stopping thing. Now I had read that that uh, baking soda actually does this, but upon testing it in my lab, I found that you need quite a bit before it actually works. It does work, but you need a good amount. So I called a firefighter friend of mine and he had a recommendation. Basically, I grabbed myself one of these expired fire extinguishers from my dump. And then I emptied it out into a bag. And then this stuff I placed into a Ziploc bag which will be what I carry with me. And testing it out, let me tell you what, this stuff works really good. It took almost nothing to put out this fire. Now, I don't know about like the toxicity of this stuff. I just assume you shouldn't be breathing it in. So like, don't, but in an emergency, it's pretty nice to have. And my friend says that like him and his firefighters, they'll carry him around in little Ziploc bags and they'll throw it into small fires just to let it do its thing, which I thought was pretty cool. This I of course attached to the requisite patch and then nestled it inside one of my inside pockets here. To wrap this thing up, I finally just sewed up the bottom so it was no longer open. And oh my God, look at how cool this thing is. One, I love how it looks. Again, that like bad scientist artificer look. Oh, it does it for me, man. But now let's actually test it out. First things first, 
it fits really good. The sleeves are a little bit bulky, but no different than like you'd find in a lab coat or whatever. Normally anything like this would be like one size fits all. So that's awesome. The hood is great, fits right on. And again, I don't find any resistance with the stuff that's inside of it. But if I need it, dust mask, safety glasses, earplugs. Again, it all works really well. It's easy to take out. And then it's also really easy to put away again. The sleeves, even though there's a lot of stuff inside of them, I don't feel any of them. They don't feel extra bulky aside from the fact that they're kind of big. But just like that, I have work gloves. And then when I'm done with them, they just freaking disappear and they catch right where I want them to on that Velcro because those, those bands stop them right there. So the Velcro just is there, just catches. When I need it, I have a pencil. And when I don't need it, I just let it go. It goes back to where it belongs. Same with my tape, pull that sucker out. And then when I'm done, I push my button. Bam, it's back where it belongs. Which is great because I have raging ADHD and I put stuff down, not away. I gotta remember, remind myself, away, not down, away, not down. It's so hard. And then come the various patches. First, I have this awesome light patch here, which pulls out my little flashlight. The flashlight, which I can then just attach to my chest as needed and position it however I need so I can best see my work. I could also use that fancy ass magnet on my chest to hold, you know, whatever. Just freeing up my hands. To put that lamp away, I simply attach it right back to the strap where it goes and then feed it back into its space and connect the Velcro. Again, still leaving me all the space in the pockets I need. Need my multi-tool? No worries, just pull the patch. And it being a multi-tool is just a whole bunch of different tools. You know, a multi-tool, it's aptly named. My patch sleeve here I programmed to be a conversion calculator just because that's what I find myself needing very often right now. Though I do think I'm gonna make like a list of resources that it'll link to and then I can just kind of select among them. But it's reprogrammable. I can make it do whatever I want it to do. For more emergency situations, I have my fire stopper here, which is easy enough to pull out and deploy. And on the other side, I have my tiny little first aid kit. Lengthwise, I have plenty of coverage, so I stop damaging all of my clothing, but it's still easy to move in. And again, the whole thing is light and comfortable and doesn't feel really bogged down. And if I ever want to, I just snap off this hood. It's comfortable and it's roomy enough that like, even though I'm wearing my thick sweater underneath because it gets cold down here in the winter, it still feels totally comfortable. And look at this, get my pencil. Oh, I don't need it anymore. It's gone. Oh, it's so cool. I love it so much. I know this has been long and I definitely overdid it, but this is like our last one of the year because we're gonna go on break and I really wanted to do something special. Now, I really hope you did enjoy it and you like these shenanigans that I pulled. Now, I wanna hear what you think. Why don't you leave down in the comment section below like what you would add to this different or maybe if you know how to sew better than I do, like what technique would you use differently? Again, thank you so much for watching and staying to the end. I hope y'all have a great holiday season and uh, in the meantime, Keep leveling up, you. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. Last week, I said that I'd be having like a giveaway where I'd be giving away some leather crafting tools. A bunch of you put hashtag craft in the comment section to see who would win. And today I am choosing Sister Scientist 237 Congratulations, reach out to us at the email in the description below and just let us know where you want us to send those tools. Okay, I'm leaving for real this time. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that and say fantastic way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and seriously, crazy banana stuff like this couldn't happen without their support. Special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Sophia Uldrix, Gunfighter Bull, and the Lorekeeper Library. Also Dane Welty. I messed up, I messed up Dane Welty's name last time. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to fix my mistakes. Thank you so much, I really appreciate you. If you like what we do here and wanna support us, consider joining the Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that helps a lot too. I'm gonna play with my new toy, it's so much fun. Oh my God.